chapters 2 through 12 include a series of seven miraculous signs that point to God and can be properly understood only when seen through the eyes of faith. The resurrection of Lazarus is the last and greatest of these signs. Our gospel lesson today comes toward the end of this so-called book of signs in John and serves as a transition into the book of glory, which is chapters 13 to 20, recording Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, and glorification. In the chapter that immediately precedes our gospel lesson, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. When Jesus heard that Lazarus was ill, he said, This illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. In this gospel, the glorification of Jesus revolves around his death, resurrection, and ascension. The cave in which Lazarus was buried, the stone that had to be moved away, and the dead man arising from the tomb all prefigure Jesus' resurrection, which will soon follow. The council plotted to kill Jesus because many people, learning of Lazarus' resurrection, believed in Jesus. A great crowd will welcome Jesus to Jerusalem with shouts of Hosanna, and blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. However, Jesus knows that the acclamation of Palm Sunday will quickly fade along with the people's shallow rooted faith. Our gospel lesson today tells us that six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived. Lazarus, Mary, and Martha provided dinner for him there, and Mary poured expensive perfume on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair filling the house with the fragrance of the perfume. This meal at which Mary anoints Jesus most likely takes place shortly after the end of the Sabbath, so that would have been Saturday evening. Only six days remain before the final chapter of Jesus' life on earth will begin. It is profound that Mary does this act of anointing with incredible, deep love and generosity prior to Jesus' death. As when the women actually went to the tomb to anoint his body after his death, his body was not there, but had already resurrected. You may recall an earlier story from Luke where Jesus is at Lazarus' home and Mary and Martha are serving dinner. Mary is busy working. Um, excuse, excuse me, Martha is busy working while Mary sits at Jesus' feet, attentively listening to his wisdom. <laughs> you know this relationship was very special. Mary did not just use a couple drops of perfume to anoint Jesus' feet. Mary did not use a copy of an expensive designer perfume. She used all of it. And she used the real thing. In using all of the perfume, she gave all of herself to Jesus. She held nothing back. In using such an expensive perfume, she teaches us about her relationship with Jesus. She teaches us that she is willing to give him her very best. Perfume worth a year's worth of wages. So can you imagine yourself pouring perfume on Jesus' feet that was worth maybe $30,000 to $60,000 in today's market? It can be a challenge for some people to even give one ten of their yearly wages to the ministry of Jesus Christ. And we know Jesus is the Savior of the world. What faith Mary must have had. 
No wonder she is such a prominent figure and female figure at that in the Gospels. I was thinking about yearly salaries, so I, I wanted to just see. I've, I've been told these baseball players are making quite a bit of money these days. Mike Trout makes over $35 million a year playing baseball for the Los Angeles Angels and will do so for a period of 12 years. So he's going to cash in at $426.5 million. Can you imagine Mike Trout putting one-tenth of his yearly earnings towards Jesus' mission and ministry today? I believe that would certainly make headline news. What do we give to Jesus' mission and ministry? Fortunately, our congregation is very, very, very generous. I can't stress that enough. We are very blessed to be in the company of brothers and sisters in Christ who understand the importance of the Great Commission. We are very charitable as we support the many ministries locally and worldwide. And we are giving to the living Christ as we do so. Next Sunday we will celebrate the next day of Jesus' life in this account of his passion and signs and glory. Next Sunday we will celebrate his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. In the meantime, continue to be present for the ministries we engage in. In the meantime, continue to worship Wednesday evening. In the meantime, engage in Christian education. In the meantime, continue to love your neighbors, forgive your enemies, pray and give Jesus your best. Learn from Mary's example of deep devotion and commitment to her Lord and her Savior. Live in the glory of the gospel as you do so. Amen.